While the U.S. may be showing some signs of recovery, it's a very different picture in Europe as EU leaders pack their bags for Athens to tell Greece it needs to do more to address its debt crisis. So why does this matter to your portfolio and the dollar itself? Let's bring in Peter Schiff, president at Euro Pacific Capital. Uh, Peter, I was looking at some of the, some of the recommendations that Greece is going to receive from its European allies, although they may change that term uh, in the future. And one of them is they already have this 19 percent value added tax. Uh, the folks in Germany and elsewhere want them to raise that even higher. How do they dig themselves out of a hole by sinking their economy more into a tax hole? Well, you know, they need they need to find a way to close the deficit. I would prefer that the European Union pressure the Greek government to cut back on spending. Uh, to reduce exactly. some of the programs and, and some of the outlays, to, to approach it from that perspective. But ultimately, I do believe that Europe will prevail in, in forcing Greece uh, to act less irresponsibly than it has in the past. But I hope it doesn't take the form of a, of a bailout, and I don't think it will. And I do think that in the end, any solution is going to impose a haircut on Greek creditors. And I think that's going to be a good thing, because I think it's important for people to know when you lend money, to an overly indebted government, you might not get it back. And I think that once we settle the issues with Greece, focus is going to be paid to a much greater problem here in the United States. What about the dollar, though, Peter? The behavior is awfully bizarre, considering that, look, front page of the Wall Street Journal, it says hedge funds pound the euro. Yet by the same token, we've got the U.S. dollar lower today. What is at work here, and what should we believe about our own currency? Well, today you're talking about one day. The euro is off quite a bit over the last few weeks as the, uh, this crisis has been unfolding over there. Uh, I think it's overblown, and I think the euro is oversold, and that's one of the reasons that it's up today. But if you look at the dollar's performance against other currencies, it hasn't been nearly as good, and gold has held up really well, which shows it really isn't dollar strength that we have. It's euro weakness. But at some point, I think the world is going to realize that selling the euro and buying the dollar is really the equivalent of jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. Mm. Our problems, I think, are even more substantial, and I think they're going to be coming to a head relatively soon. Well, I was just going to ask if we are in the same boat, Peter. I mean, you're, the euro and the dollar uh, suffer from the same kind of debt problems, and as a result, people are going to lose confidence in them. What do the Chinese do and the other countries that have been buying U.S. debt? Uh, yeah, remember, how do they turn off that spigot? We're, we're in, a, we're in a the same type of boat as Greece, not Europe as a whole. Remember, Europe as a whole is still a creditor. Right. The European Union uh, is, is lending money, not borrowing. You just have some countries in Europe that are in bad shape, but it's balanced by other countries like Germany that are in much better shape. But what happens the United if the Chinese States, stop buying our debt, Peter? Well, that is going to happen. And when oh, the you Chinese say that, stop but buying... it doesn't, Peter. I, I bring this up because I keep hearing, oh, the Chinese are making noises yeah. for years now, and they yeah. still continue well, to do so. Look, it takes a while. You know, I was, I was criticizing and calling for a collapse in the Internet stocks for years before it happened. The same thing with the housing market. I was yelling and screaming about a housing bubble. It took a while for it to burst. You have irrational behavior. It won't continue forever. The Chinese, the Japanese, the Saudis, they will come to their senses. They will stop lending us money. And that is when the Greek tragedy really unfolds in the United States. Well, Phil Flynn, let me bring you in. We're, we're trying to gauge where the dollar and the euro might be in the, in the near future. We have seen this 10 percent drop in the value of the euro against the dollar. How much further? Some of these hedge fund guys say it's going to go down to parity. It's now about a dollar thirty for one euro. Uh, will it go down to parity, one to one? I think yes. The answer is yes. And and you know, despite the fact Peter says that some of the countries in the EU are in good shape, they are. But the you know, the rest of them are going to bring them down. You know, you yeah, but the rest of them are not in his EU karate. We're in worse shape in than all right. the rest of them. We're in worse shape. We may, and, you know, very well. I think, that very, I think, yeah. let me make a, a point is that I think sure. the trade of being short the euro is now overly crowded. I think the sentiment has shifted very quickly from being anti-dollar to anti-euro. And when that happens, there's a good chance uh, that that consensus is going to be wrong and wrong in a big way. And so I think it is a lot easier now for the dollar to drop precipitously than it was a month ago when you had more people betting against the dollar than, than betting on it. Go ahead, Phil. I totally disagree. And let me tell you why, Peter, because we have been in a play here since the Fed went to quantitative easing of selling the dollar and, and, and buying the euro. And why were we buying the euro? Because that became the defunct 
you know, global currency, you know, it, it replaced the dollar. Everybody thought that was a safe place to be. But obviously, when you have more problems developing, and they're not over. If you think this is all about Greece, it isn't just about Greece. It's the rest of the countries in the EU. And, and, and it comes down to the fact, as far as confidence yeah, but in the, the currency We are in overall, worse shape. That's, there, that, we that's, have, uh, that, we it have, doesn't matter. It, that yes, may it be does. true, but we have, it's we the have confidence in the currency. Go right. ahead, Peter. But listen, yeah, our debt-to-GDP ratio is already 100%. It's going to be well north of that a year from now. And right. you look at the contingency liabilities, you look at the debt of Freddie and Fannie, and our economy is not recovering. But We're Peter, really what, still in Peter, recession. Peter, what triggers the, the doomsday scenario that you're talking about? If all of these things are already in place right now, we have an outrageous deficit, not to mention what, what appears to be a, a still weak economy. Look, we're in a giant bubble. There are a lot of pins that could prick it. You know, I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but there's so many. But meanwhile, you know, it's not just buying the euro to get out of the dollar. There are all other there are currencies. People are buying Asian currencies. They're buying, uh, you know, you can buy currencies in other countries. You can buy gold. You can buy commodities. There's all sorts of ways to get rid of your dollar. It hasn't just been buy the buy the euro. It's been get out of the dollar. And I think that trade is going to come back on. Although and Phil, it's going to come back on stronger than ever. Phil, I'm interested to know if you think that your European economies are going to improve at all with the advice. So I mentioned to Peter, they're telling them to raise the value added tax, uh, to raise taxes on luxury items, things that in the past have had the opposite effect of reviving an economy. If, if those things don't work, they could be in even worse shape. Exactly, Dave. You're hitting the nail on the head. I mean, in some ways, we're talking about apples and oranges. And, and listen, you know, the bottom line is, is that when you look at where we're at right now and where the perception of these two currencies were just a few months ago, the dollar does not look that bad by relationship. And the other thing is, is that as a currency, Peter, now that these all these countries are here, if we if the, if the EU has to bail out uh, basically Greece, you know, they're going to be on the hook for how many different economies? Yeah. You're talking about 14, but, 15 different yeah, economies about, that they have to look at. You're forgetting that the U.S. government is not only on the hook for itself, but what about entities like Fannie and Freddie? What about the Wall Street banks? What about states like California who are asking for bailouts? That will be We're our next conversation. On what about everybody on Social Security? What if that Social Security needs right. a bailout? Gang, you thank know, you. We, we've got to end it there, but it's, it's, it leads all to so many different roads. Thank you, Peter. Peter, thank Phil, you, Phil, have a good weekend.